Hey everybody, today Rado runs down Tour Operator, which is a card drafting, resource management, area control style game where two to four players are travel agents trying to get their customers where they need to go to have a good time. And the way it works is every round we are going to go through six distinct phases. Now the first one is if you have any tourists in one of your hotels they might check out uh, in the beginning of the game we don't worry about that so let's move on to phase two. New tourists appear. This is the card drafting. Everybody gets a handful of cards equal to one more than the empty spaces in their agency. I've got one, two, three, four spaces waiting for tourists so I draw one, two, three, four, Five. And now, I'm going to pick one less than the number of spaces I've got to uh, to basically take their business. And I really want to look for synergy. Like, okay, right off the bat, this is good. Heather likes shopping and culture. In fact, she loves culture. It gives me plus one if I get her to a cultural city. And Gigi also likes um, shopping and culture. So I might want to put them on the same plane to go to the same city because they've got synergy. But there's a problem here. They are both wealthy travelers and demand first class seats. I've only got one first class seat. So if I were to try to put both of them on the same flight, well, I would lose some points because one of them would not be happy. But still, this overlap between us is pretty cool. I think I'll go on ahead and take both of them and I gotta take one more. So it's Benny or Amanda or Iman. Benny likes the outdoors. Neither of them like So, bye bye Benny. I'm not going to go with him. And Amanda, she's a bit of a party animal. And that's all she likes. I think I'll go with Amon because, hey, she also likes shopping. So, I've got three people here who uh, have something in common. They all like shopping. She likes partying. They like culture. Now, you'll always have two cards left over, uh, which is why you draw one more than you need and you take one less than you need. So, the la last two cards go to the next player. And the next player to your right hands you two cards. So, my last seat, or my last space, is going to be filled by Omar or Steve. Let's see. And Steve, hey, he's not bad. He likes partying and culture, so he could work out well with them. But I've got another problem. Steve, he's not picky about his air flight, but he wants a first-class room, as does Heather. So, if I tried to get Steve and Heather flying together, um, well, I mean, she would take the first class. He's fine. But they both want my only first-class room. So again, I'd have a conflict between them. So I think I'll go on ahead and take Omar. Iman and Omar, hey, maybe they'll meet up and they'll both have a great time partying, potentially. Oh no, Omar also wants a first class room. Arr. Well, there's one other good thing about Omar. He will only stay for one week. So if I put him in a room, he'll only clog the room up for one week before I can put more people in and make more points. Steve, he's got longer plans. He wants to stick around for two. So I'll take Omar anyway, even though there might be a little bit of conflict between my customers there. Now, of course, this is card drafting. Everybody's doing this at the same time. Once everybody's done and they've filled up their travel agency at this, they'll always have all four spaces filled. Then we gain and use resources. That's where the dice come in, folks. In player order, everybody rolls the dice and see what they get. All righty. I've got two um, refreshing, you know, two clean airline seats, two clean uh, hotel beds, and a wild. This is the most powerful thing you can roll because this means you can take any side you want. Um, so if you could roll all five of these, you would be golden. If you don't roll any of them, you're very, very sad. Because here's the thing. There might be a point in the game where you are desperate for something like uh, you know a clean bed and you didn't roll them. Um, like Actually, right now, my problem is I got no jet fuel. I start with two jet fuel, so I'm okay. But if I don't have enough jet fuel, my people aren't going anywhere. So if I wanted, um, I could make this the jet fuel or I can jettison as many dice as I want, and for every die I get rid of, I can force another die to be whatever. Um, now, at this point, I'm happy with it. I'll go on ahead and take the uh, two clean, uh, clean airline seat tokens and the two clean bedroom tokens, because I'm going to need those anyway, and this is a wild. I could make it jet fuel. I'm going to make it. I'd like to hire an employee. So we'll say that's what it was, and so whenever you get the hire employee, you go to the employee deck, you draw three, and pick one. The other two go to the bottom of the deck. So let's see here. I could have um, this guy, who this little symbol means, he works in my agency, and he lets me once per round, sometimes they're once for the whole game, but this guy's once per round, I can force a die to be whatever I want. He's awesome. 
Uh, on the other hand, I could ha I could uh, hire this maid to go work in my hotels, who once per round cleans a room without the need for room tokens. You know what? Since I got a couple of room tokens, I don't think I'm going to hire her. Let's see. And what's my other one? Oh, this is another uh, concierge at the hotel. Now, she's a funky one. The game has this kind of iconographic uh, equation language. So, it's plus one victory point per uh, t uh, tenant I put in a first class bed. And you can see there's a little summary of how you can read all this stuff. A little dash means either per or in. So if I understand this correctly, I if I have her every round for the rest of the game, I, I get one point every time I put a customer in my first class room. Let's see, and I am playing, hey, I've got a couple of first class people, so this might be a nice way to get points. But this is a nice way to control the dice. I can only hire one. Let's go for let's go for the concierge. Now the other ones they go back to the bottom of the deck. And as you can see, I could still hire a maintenance person or a travel agent or a pilot in a future turn if I roll such that I can hire more people. So anyway, that's it. Everybody does this one after another. And now after we've gained and used resources, the tourists are going to fly to their destination and we score our points. Now to show you this, I'm gonna have to get this out of the way because as part of setup, we put out a grid of locations on the board. Let's see here. Where are we getting? Oh, we locations all around the world. Some are most are exotic and exciting, like Kilimanjaro or Cairo. Some are less exciting, like Essen. Obviously, that's an inside joke for all the board gamers out there. Let's see. And of course, from the get-go, I would have known what all cities, what locations were going to be in the game, and I could have been taking this into account when I was deciding who I was going to do business with during the card drafting phase. Uh, here's. I don't even know some of these places. Cusco, Bangkok, I know. Uh, London, I know. So anyway, so this is the way it's going to be. These are all the locations for this game. The rest of the cards are out. With more players, of course, it would be a bigger grid because there's more places to fly. So now, I've got to pick. If I'm the first player, where am I going to fly my folks? Um, but first, got to pick, pick who is going to fly because I've only got three seats and four customers. So let's go on ahead and um, let's see. If I have Iman and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, if I have Omar go, um, he's going to want my deluxe room, which I definitely want to fill. So, But he doesn't need a first-class seat, so I'll have him just go on ahead and take a regular seat. Okay. And Heather wants a deluxe room. I don't want Heather and Omar to fight over my one first-class room. So I'll have uh, Gigi here go. So he, um, And he also wanted my first-class seat, so he's happy. And that means Iman. Iman here is going to take my other seat. And Heather... I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait until next week, and maybe we can get you on a flight. So anyway, these are the three that are going to fly, and I need to fly all three of them. And you can see, all my seats are filled. i got to fly all three of them to the location that's best suited. And so what I want is a location that's good for partying, for Iman and Omar, or for shopping, for Iman and Gigi. Culture would be nice, but culture doesn't help them. So, um, partying, shopping, or culture. Where am I going to fly? Like I said, I would have been thinking about this during the draft. Um... But my eye is drawn to Essen. Essen has terrible um, wilderness. There's no nature there. And there's very little culture. But there's great shopping. A fiver and partying is five as well. We're going to Essen, everybody. Now, in the beginning of the game, I can say my plane is on the outside of this grid wherever I want. I'm going to say I'm here at Rome. And I started with two jet fuel. I will spend one to fly to Rome. And then I will spend the other, my last jet fuel, to fly to Essen. And I have now occupied this space. If there had been somebody in the way, I could have paid to fly over them, but I couldn't land in the same space. So I'm here at Essen, and I'm going to score some points. Uh, um, Omar and Iman are both... Or Omar's coming here to party. Iman is coming here for culture or shopping, plus one, and Gigi's coming for uh, shopping, because even though they have two interests, they will only fulfill one interest wherever they end up. So Omar... Five points for shopping. Uh, Gigi, five points for, or you know, Omar is partying, and Gigi and Iman are shopping. That's 15 points plus one, because she's a super shopper. That gave me 16 points. Woohoo! On the big score track. Alrighty. So I've scored 16 points, and um, that is awesome. I keep track of that. And um, now everybody else would go. You know, so another player might, and another might have been hoping to go to Essen, but now, oh, well, crap, I got to go someplace else, or what have you. So after everybody else is gone, you know, somebody went to Bangkok, somebody went to Cairo, etc., etc., and everybody scored their points, now the next phase is tourists check into the hotel. So come back on out here, tourists. So, uh, um, let's see, Omar wanted my first class room. 
So this room is now occupied, and I have to clean this room up before anybody else will occupy it. Fortunately, I'll be able to clean the rooms later. And remember, my concierge says I get an extra victory point every time I occupy this space. So boom, I just got another point. Woohoo! Okay, and Omar is only going to stay for one week. So next week, next round, he's going to leave. That's what happens at the beginning. Everybody decides how much longer they're going to stay. So he's going to leave, which will open it up so that I can put Heather on a plane next round. So this timing is going very well. But anyways, that's where he goes. Iman and Gigi, they, they don't have big needs. They'll just go into my two regular rooms. And now, if I was not able to match their room requirements, I would lose a point. If I did not have three rooms available, and I couldn't put them in the room, I would actually lose three points because they would go away angry. But as it is, I took care of everybody. And Amon, wow, she's going to stick around for three weeks hogging up that room. But Gigi, he's going to be in and out. Uh, so I'm going to have these two rooms available next round, this room, but this room is going to be tied up for a while. And Heather, well, she's waiting for next week, um, but we'll come back to her in a second. So the last step is, after everybody checks in, everybody does that simultaneously, activities and waiting tourists get impatient. Because I've come here to Essen, Essen is known for its hiking, apparently. Kilimanjaro is known for hiking and snow because of the mountain. Athens is known for scuba diving and sun. Essen is only known for hiking. I am the first player, which means my people are going to go for a little hike, everybody. And over here is the activity board. And in a two-player game, is any of these, I'll occupy, say, this one. And now, if I can trigger a uh, snow or and a scuba diving activity later on, if I fill all three of these spaces, Cases, I'll score three points. But this is the area control because somebody else might claim this one and then we're in a race. Because once somebody has claimed this row, nobody else can. So, um, you know, you want to be quick and this makes you target specific cities. So you're targeting cities not only based on what your people say they want, but what kind of activities you can send them off on to get these other area control points. So anyway, that's that. And now Essen is done. No one can ever come here again. So as you can imagine, over the course of six or uh, five or four rounds, depending on how many players, more and more places go away. And uh, the board gets tighter and tighter. But you still got to pay fuel to fly to new locations. And so you need to keep getting that fuel. But let's see. If we go to round two, after um, the t player order changes based on whoever has the fewest points, in round two, tourists might check out. Omar checks out. Gigi checks out. I've got two rooms. Iman stays. But here's the thing. These rooms are empty, but unless I can get them clean, fortunately, I've got these. So I've got them clean. I've now got three rooms ready to go. Um, and Iman's going to stay there for a while. So I am set to get Heather into my first class room and score more po another point for my concierge next round. However, let's not forget Heather. Remember how we left her behind? Well, she started out with a medium happiness. And since she did not get on a plane, she's going to drop by one. If she ever drops again, well, you guessed it. She's going to go away angry and I lose three points. However, if I've got a coupon, I can just hand one over to her. And that means her happiness will not drop and she will patiently wait until next week. So uh, what will happen next time I roll could have a big impact. Hey, I've got the one jet fuel I need to come here, but what if I'm not first anymore and there's somebody right here and I'm looking who they might book and I think they might go to Athens. If they go ahead of me, i got to have a fallback plan because once Athens is gone, do I have enough to get over to, to Cusco, which is also pretty good for culture. Who knows? But that, folks, is the basic flow of Tour Operator, which is a clever game. It's beautiful. It's fast. It's smooth. It's fairly easy to play. Jen and I, we were not fans of these dice. They can be so wildly swingy. So one person can get what they want, or even better, get these wild cards. Another player might spend most of the game constantly having to jettison dice to get the die faces that they need, or what have you. Um, so that's kind of a problem. Plus, Jen and I, we were okay with it, but I'm sure some people will have a problem with this kind of iconographic language for ability. So you got to know that going in. That might be a bit of a problem for you. But uh, of course, Quick games FAQ, and if you don't mind some rolls of the dice and some random swingy luck, Tour Operator might be worth checking out, folks. And that is the rundown. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.